Welcome to lectures and interviews about leadership for sustainability. I'm Bruce Hall. Somebody puts you in charge of environmental justice. You're the environmental justice judge. You decide where the pollution goes, where the hazardous waste goes. It's got to go somewhere. Who gets it? You decide. You decide whose communities get washed away because of rising sea levels. You decide who dies of climate change to cause heat stroke. You decide who inhales the polluted air that shortens lives and harms IQ. You decide who gets to live near waste dumps and oil refineries. You decide who lives near environmental amenities and gets nice views and easy access to parks and safe walking trails. For the sake of this thought experiment, also imagine that you're standing in a public place with lots of people to give this stuff to. The pollution and hardship you have to distribute keeps piling up by the gigaton every day. You can't make it stop piling up. It's a necessary byproduct of modern civilization. It will be distributed whether you do it or not. How do you decide who gets it? How do you be fair? Do you distribute it randomly and evenly? Does everybody get the same burden? Or do you give more to wealthy people who have health care and can afford to safely store or clean the pollution? Or do you give it to the sick and the poor, people who already suffer, have even less resources to cope with, and are also less likely to have their complaints heard by media outlets and people in power? I'm sure you can see where the story is going. Environmental injustice is a huge problem. Degraded environments and toxic pollution and hardships are not evenly distributed in, the, in this world. If you map them, you'll find them located near poor, disempowered communities. Likewise, the amenities tend to be located near wealthy, empowered communities. What would you do differently? But you say, Bruce, stop laying all this guilt on me. I'm not the environmental justice judge. But I say, everything you do is connected to environmental justice. For example, if I just reach over here and turn off this light, I've reduced some carbon emission from some coal-fired power plant. That's changing the climate in Bangladesh, flooding out some farmer, right? I've impacted people. I don't know the direct connection, but I know it's there for just about everything you do. Let me give you some examples. Even some things that seem innocent, like your lawn, have huge impacts. In some wealthy communities, half of their treated water is applied to lawns and gardens, while in other communities, some people still don't have access to drinking water. Many suburban streams have more fertilizer and pesticide runoff than streams located in the highest intensity agriculture because homeowners tend to overapply. Meanwhile, dumps are getting filled up with grass clippings. In the U.S., we spend hundreds of billions of dollars each year on lawn care. That's more than we spend on some wars, and that money could be spent in assisting homelessness, structural inequality, or tuition assistance. And don't even get me started on dogs. And how about that phone of yours that you use to take selfies in nature? Ever wonder what happens to it when you upgrade? Or to your computer, your TV, or a car battery? Electronic waste is incredibly toxic, but because it is also full of rare metals, someone in this world might be exposing themselves to toxins just to harvest a few pennies of material. And how about that mine or clear cut or pipeline you protested last year and stopped from being put in your neighborhood? You didn't stop it, you just moved it to somewhere else. Society still needs the minerals and paper and gas. Somebody else got stuck with that unwanted land use. Even preservation in parks can cause injustice. For example, when you donate money to save some rainforest, the result likely evicts people from the land who have been there for generations harvesting trees and fruit and animals. They no longer have an economy thanks to you. Justice and fairness are core values of just about every civilization. They're embedded in the golden rule of do unto others. They're certainly core principles of American civilization. Fairness and equal opportunity are reflected in the Declaration of Independence. You don't tolerate unfairness in your regular life. For example, if I were to fail you because I didn't like the color of your hair, you would go to my boss and get me fired, rightly. Right? And then you'd get the grade that you earned, the grade that based on your productivity, not your hair color. So if you don't tolerate injustice and unfairness in your regular life, why do you tolerate it in your environmental life? <music>